Greetings all you gardener friends out there. Are you ready for an information packed video? Well here we go. Companion planting part three. Herbs. I want to be sure and say this right up front because I forgot to in the last video. If you're like me and you watch videos that have so much information, I'm, I'm just sitting there taking notes like crazy. You don't have to do that unless you just want to because I have it all written down for you. All of the information on all three parts so far of companion planting and eventually all five parts will be on there. You can find it on my blog, farmerbrownsparadise.com. It'll be, right now, the first article up, Companion Planting 2.0. Or you can go down into the description box, click down in there under the video, and I have a link to it. So let's get started. You know, there are dozens and dozens of herbs, but I have chosen 13 that I think work really well in the vegetable garden. So, even though that may not be a lucky number, let's jump right in. Here we go, number one, basil. Basil is considered an annual crop. You can plant it in its own container or you can interplant it with your vegetables. If you interplant, I would only use one small plant and I would pick varieties of basil that are the smaller globe uh, growing types. Benefits of basil. Here we go. Number one, its strong scent repels asparagus beetles, white flies, thrips, aphids, spider mites, flies, mosquitoes, and tomato hornworms. When you're out in the garden and you're walking by your basil, be sure to crush the crush the leaves a little bit that's going to release the oils and the scent of the basil aiding further in deterring these pests number two basil improves the flavor and the growth of crops especially tomatoes lettuce and petunias now I'll give you a little tip petunias we're going to get to that in number four but petunias also improve the growth and the flavor of tomatoes. So for me, when I'm planting out my tomatoes, this year they're gonna be in 14 gallon tubs versus my five gallon buckets that we've used the last few years. But I'm going to intercrop those tomatoes with basil, with chives, which also improve the flavor, and petunias. Number three, when left to flower at the end of the season, it attracts pollinators such as bees and butterflies like basil too. Lastly, number four, chamomile, another herb, when planted in the same container with basil, increases the essential oils. So where should you companion plant basil? Actually, basil, very easy to grow, plays very well with nearly everything in the garden. But some good vegetable crops to plant it with are peppers, lettuce, tomatoes, parsley, sage, thyme, and oregano. What should you not plant basil with? Well, basically three things. Rue, which is another herb, sage, another herb, and rosemary, a third herb. In fact, basil interplanted with rosemary will kill the rosemary. Number two, catmint. All mints are considered a perennial, however, the hardiness zones are four through eight. Additionally, all mints, all the mint family are extremely invasive. They grow like crazy. So I would never interplant them with something else because it's going to crowd it out. They need to be planted in their own container. Now, unlike basil, the mint family and cat mint likes very moist soil. So again, if you're growing in the RGGS or the KPGS, they're gonna do great in a grow bag, in a kiddie pool, sitting in 
water at the bottom. You can grow it in a bucket on your RGGS2, but my recommendation would be that for the first couple of weeks after you've transplanted it to top water it, um, just until you can see that it's establishing because you want those roots to be able to get down to that moisture level. So top water it until you're assured that it's growing well. What are the benefits of mint and various kinds of mint by the way? Number one, the strong scent of the mint family repels aphids, asparagus beetles, ants, cabbage moths, the Colorado potato beetles, squash bugs, and Japanese beetles. Spearmint and peppermint additionally repel black flea beetles, cabbage maggots, mosquitoes, and the white cabbage butterfly. Interject something here about uh, spearmint. A friend on my group page said she grew spearmint last year in her KPGS and I think she said a five gallon grow bag. And after one year, she said she had to cut the bag away uh, in order to get the mint out of the container. She said it wasn't root bound, but it was definitely filling up the pot. Well, see, it's optimum conditions because it was in a kiddie pool, so it was sitting in some water. Number three, when left to flower, it attracts bees and butterflies. So what are some good companion plants for mint, for cat mint, since that's the one we're talking about? Beans, broccoli, cucumbers, potatoes, peppers, and squash. The foe for the mint family is parsley. You do not want to plant them near each other. Number three, chamomile. There are two types of chamomile, Roman, chamomile is the best type to use, the best variety to use for growing in containers. The other type are German chamomile and those in some areas can be considered noxious plants because they are so invasive. The Roman chamomile is considered a perennial while the German chamomile is considered an annual but remember the German chamomile will reseed so it comes up back up every year. Plant chamomile in its own container and I would suggest making sure that your container has a 12 inch uh, minimum diameter. You can interplant it but I, I would only do that with other herbs not with your vegetables and if you want to interplant it with some other herbs you want to go even larger. But remember, if you want to plant it with other herbs, you need to choose those that have the same growing parameters. Chamomile is another one of those that does not like wet feet, does not like to sit in water. And remember, basil doesn't either. Well, interestingly enough, when basil and chamomile are planted together, the chamomile actually enhances the growth and the essential oil production of your basil. The benefits. Chamomile increases the essential oils of any nearby herb. Two, it attracts hoverflies and parasitic wasps that prey on aphids and other pest insects. And additionally, the beautiful little flowers of chamomile attract bees and butterflies. Chamomile tea can be sprayed on seed starts to prevent damping off as your chamomile flowers uh, you can actually pull those flowers and make a tea out of it and use it for the damping off when you're seed starting. Number four, it's believed to increase the absorption of calcium when it's added to a compost pile. Five, this short herbal carpet can be used as a lawn substitute as it grows on slopes, spreads to fill in gaps, and it blocks out most weeds. It tolerates most light foot traffic and you can mow it uh, if you set your mower on its highest setting. What are some good companion plants for chamomile? Well, we mentioned basil. That's definitely one. And it's also nice to maybe plant it in its own container near onions, cabbage, and cucumbers. I have not found any foes in my research. Uh, for chamomile. Next up, cilantro. 
also known as Mexican parsley, cilantro is an annual. It is a cool season herb that can bolt very quickly. You can plant it in its own container or you can intercrop it if you just use one uh, with some of the other vegetables that might benefit from having cilantro planted with it. Like mints, cilantro likes moist soil. So again, it's going to do very well in a grow bag, in a KPGS or in a saucer uh, where it can sit in some water. It will do well on the RGGS, but as I mentioned before, anything that likes very moist soil and you're going to plant it on in a bucket on a gutter, water it in um, and keep, keep watering it for the first two or three weeks until you see that it is very well established and its roots are reaching down to the bottom. So what are the benefits of cilantro? Number one, cilantro deters aphids, potato beetles, spider mites and white flies and if you leave it to flower it's going to attract parasitic wasps and hoverflies. There are varieties out there that will bolt quickly so for me planting cilantro I'm going to choose the varieties that will do that they'll bolt and flower and draw in those uh, beneficial insects the parasitic wasps and the hoverflies. When looking at seed pack varieties if it's not bolting quickly, it usually will say slow to bolt. Good companion plants for cilantro are beans, celery, eggplant, peas, potatoes, spinach, and tomatoes. The foes are two herbs, dill and fennel. Number five, dill. Dill is considered a biennial. What that means is in its first year of growth it only develops stems and leaves. In year two it will go to flower, drop its seeds, and then reseed itself. So most of the time dill is grown as an annual rather than a perennial. You want to plant dill in its own container and it does not like wet feet. The benefits of dill are number one it repels aphids, spider mites, squash bugs, and cabbage flies. It serves as a trap crop for tomato hornworms. And third, it attracts beneficials such as the praying mantis, ladybugs, parasitic wasps, hoverflies, and spiders that feed on pests. Dill has a lot of great companion plants. Um, in the garden, but again, I would keep it in its own container. Some great companion plants are asparagus, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, celery, corn, cucumbers, lettuce, melons, onions, squash, and tomatoes. Dill does have some foes. You do not want to interplant it, same container, with carrots, caraway, cilantro, lavender, or in, as I said, the same container with tomatoes. Dill will actually cross-pollinate with cilantro, ruining both the flavors of cilantro and the dill. Let's talk about the beautiful fragrant herb, lavender. Lavender is a perennial. It needs, however, to be planted in its own container. And again, it does not like wet feet. In fact, it's very drought tolerant. In the deep south, like where I live, it actually does better in pots and containers because it has improved drainage and better air circulation. It is important when planting lavender in containers to pick varieties that do well in containers and also those that are good for your zone. That's one of the things that I learned uh, the hard way. Uh, I just saw some Munstead lavender and grabbed it up, tried it a couple of years, planted in a landscape bed. It never lived. And part of that problem, the reason were two things. That bed did not drain very well um, and that's the wrong kind of lavender for this area. 
that's more of for the northern cooler climates it should not sit in water it it basically was way too wet in that landscape bed with lavender and watering less is more the benefits of lavender are number one confuses pest insects what a beauty that is in the garden number two deters coddling moths as well as a wide variety of flies and beetles pollinators absolutely flock to lavender it's resistant to deer and rabbits and it attracts hummingbirds and butterflies and ladybugs and birds companion plants for lavender are uh, cauliflower cabbage kale and broccoli and uh, flowering plants like um, echinacea aster and sedum the only foe that I have found uh, with lavender is the herb dill in researching a little bit more about lavender I found a list of varieties that are the best for container plants uh, but again you need to know which ones are best for your zones here's the list Anook silver anook by the way those two are the best for uh, the deep south super blue blue river mini blue and thumbelina lee one place you can find uh, all of these varieties of plants as well as a whole lot of growing information on the lavender is a, a website americanmeadows.com Number seven, oregano. Oregano is a spreading perennial. However, if you have a really cold, harsh winter, it can die back. You want to plant oregano in its own container. Um, it too does not like wet feet, so you don't want it sitting in standing water. You get a wide variety of flavors with oregano. It comes from two families, uh, the, the mint family, uh, the Mediterranean oreganos, and the Mexican oregano, which is actually from the lemon verbena family. Oregano repels many types of insects to include cabbage moths. Aphids are deterred by means of predation. Actually, aphids love oregano, but this herb attracts Syrifidae, which are fancy scientific word for hoverflies. They're sometimes called flower flies, and the hoverflies will feed on the aphids. A second benefit is that oregano is a great companion with all. As a companion plant, it really does well planted with basil, broccoli, cauliflower, peppers, sage, thyme, garlic, onions, and chives. Number eight, parsley. Parsley is also a biennial, so it is usually grown as an annual. You can plant parsley in its own container, or you can interplant it um, with another vegetable. It likes moist soil, so again, it's going to do very well in a grow bag on the KPGS in in your kiddie pool where it the bottom of the bag is sitting in some water and just like I've mentioned before with those that like uh, sitting in water and staying moist if you're growing parsley in your bucket on the rain gutter garden system be sure to water it in top water it in the first couple of weeks two or three weeks until you're sure that the roots are reaching water and that it is thriving the benefits of parsley, it's believed to repel harmful beetles. When flowering, it draws butterflies and hoverflies. And it increases the fragrance of roses when it's planted with them. Some good companion plants for parsley are asparagus, carrots, chives, corn, onions, peas, peppers and tomatoes. You do not want to interplant parsley with lettuce or with mint. Number nine, rosemary. 
Rosemary is a perennial for zones seven and up. For zones six and down, it's an annual unless you try to bring it inside and keep it alive, which can be difficult to do. I would plant rosemary in its own container. I would not interplant it with any vegetable. It does not like wet feet. A container of rosemary should not sit in standing water. The benefits of rosemary, well, they repel bean beetles, carrot flies, moths, and cabbage flies. And it does benefit the growth of sage when it's interplanted with it. Again, I'd use a large container if you're going to interplant rosemary and sage together. And I would not have one of those saucers or trays where it's holding water. Some companion plants for rosemary out in the vegetable garden are beans, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, hot peppers, sage, and thyme. Rosemary's foes, you do not want to interplant with basil, potatoes, pumpkins, and squash. Rosemary will die when interplanted with basil. Number 10, sage. Sage is also a perennial. It too does not like wet feet, so when planting it in its own container, make sure it is not sitting in water. The benefits. Number one, the strong scent of sage deters black bee beetles and some bean parasites, cabbage flies, cabbage maggots, cabbage looper, and carrot flies. When left to flower, it also attracts honeybees. Companion plants for sage are beans, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, carrots, strawberries, tomatoes, and rosemary. Sage's foes, you do not want to plant with cucumbers, onions, and rue. Number 11, tarragon. Tarragon is an annual in temperate climates, but it is a perennial in the hotter, more humid climates. Plant tarragon in its own container. Again, it doesn't like wet feet, so no sitting in water in saucers. The benefits. Tarragon with its aromatic leaves and its peppery light flavor is a general nuisance to pests. Companion plants for tarragon. You can plant tarragon throughout the garden and it can help enhance the flavor and the growth, especially when interplanted with eggplant. A note here, tarragon can get very tall so if you decide you want to try interplanting with eggplant, for example, I would use a very um, good sized container, a minimum of seven gallons, and only put one little seedling in with your eggplant. As far as foes, I found no foes for tarragon in my research. Thyme is a very hardy perennial. You can plant it in its own container or you can interplant it with other vegetables and herbs. But if you do so, I would choose the smaller um, forming varieties of thyme. It's a very slow grower, so you shouldn't have any issue if you do decide you want to intercrop. This hardy perennial is actually adaptable to pots as small as four to six inches. It doesn't like wet feet though, so no sitting in standing water. The benefits. Time deters cabbage worms and white fly infestations. Companion plants. Time plays well with most things throughout the garden, but it's especially good with all of the brassicas, eggplant, strawberries, tomatoes, and potato. Its only foes are cucumbers and the onion family. And rounding out number 13 is an unusual herb called valerian. Valerian is a perennial. Again, you need to plant it in its own container. It does not like wet feet either, so it should not sit in water. The benefits of valerian. Number one, it has very fragrant flowers. And number two, it attracts hoverflies. 
companion plants, plant it near echinacea, catnip, dill, and agastache, which are just giant hyssops. In my research, I have not found that valerian has any foes. Some final notes about herbs and container planting. For the herbs that do not like uh, wet feet or to sit in standing water, my recommendation would be that you uh, put some pea rock in the bottom, bottom of your container prior to putting the potting mix in and planting it. If your container is going to sit just out on the ground, don't use a saucer at all. Uh, just hand water it when needed. Secondly, when you're out in your garden doing your little garden walks and you're walking by some of those herbs, crush the leaves. That will help release the scent. Third, be careful not to over fertilize herbs. Most of the herbs do not like uh, extra fertilizer they just don't like to be fussed with in that regard some like thyme and oregano thrive on neglect and they just won't taste as flavorful if they're given too much attention water or food and lastly the harvesting general rule of thumb for herbs the more you pick the more you get Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for part four, my favorite companion planting with flowers. So for now, bye and have a good one. I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. How do you pronounce the word spelled the plant spelled H-E-R-B? Herb. Hey, well, did you know that in Britain, the British people pronounce the H? Well, that's... They say herb. Yeah, and the Tijuana brass. <laughs> I thought that was Mexico. <laughs> Americans say herb. Yeah.